Okay, uh, this is my second video on uh, programming for the uh, TurboGrafx-16 PC Engine uh, using assembly. Uh, but uh, right now I'm just finding links uh, for to download assemblers and emulators and stuff like that. So while I'm doing that, uh, while you're waiting for me to finish doing that, I think I'll just do a more detailed overview of the uh, sound system on the PC Engine uh, and just show how some games you know, set up their sound and play music and do effects that make it sound a bit better rather than just standard PSG style beeps and boops. Uh, so I think I'll do that first. I'll just show how the sound is set up. Um, and I, I made a few of my own uh, programs or pieces of software on the PC Engine that uh, either play ripped music from games and allow me to turn off their s channels and stuff. Uh, also, uh, that let me define my own waveforms and play around with those. Uh, nothing professional, nothing complete, uh, but uh, it'll this will at least give you an idea of what the PC Engine usually sounds like and what you can make it sound like too. Okay, I'm going to start with uh, one of Hudson Soft's earlier uh, games and sound. Uh, well, the earliest sound basically. Um, this is Victory Run. Stop that for a second. Okay, um, I made a uh, visual music player um, in on the PC Engine. It's something that plays uh, ripped music from from games and displays their notes uh, on screen uh, in a graph or like a player piano. So you can see uh, the volume of each of the channels and the the pitch uh, visually. Uh, I'll get that going. Well, I'm sorry for the, uh, the little bit jerkiness of the scrolling. That's not this program, that's my video capture program. I have it at kind of a low frame rate. Anyway, um, on screen, you can see all the sound channels at the top left, from red to purple. I can turn them on and off um, uh, individually. Okay, and there we go, that's off. Okay, so uh, in the visual display, I have uh, on the very left, going down the screen, the uh, volume level of all the uh, channels, each of the channels. Uh, to the left is uh, the quietest, and then as they move to the right, that's the that's louder volume. Uh, and of course, they're color-coded based on these channels up here. Uh, and in the middle are the same six channels. Uh, their pitches are shown uh, visually. So when it's to the very right, uh, left side of the screen, that's the highest pitch, and then to the right is the lowest pitch. And if one of the channels, four and five, has a uh, noise function enabled, white noise like this, then that's color-coded in gray on the very right side of the screen, or near the right side of the screen. Uh, and of course, lowest noise. Um, the lowest noise uh, pitch is on the left, and higher noise pitch is on the right. I'll slow that down. You can hear that. That's how a lot of games do their percussion. Uh, they just set the noise to do some hits and things like that. And here's the base uh, of one of the channels. So that's the base part of the melody. And you can hear it sounds a little bit flanged, but uh, that's not being done with any ADSR uh, or any kind of uh, synthesis because the uh, Peace Engine sound hardware doesn't have any special hardware to do ADSR or pitch slides or anything, or flanging. That's being done just through a simple volume change. It starts out high and then gets low pretty quickly. The volume does. Uh, 
All right, so I'll go to another sum. Uh, and yeah, you'll see that uh, Victory Run and uh, JJ and Jeff, Katochan, Kenchan, um, those games are typical early Hudson uh, soft uh, sound, uh, well, composition, of course, but also the simple, the way that they did a lot of their songs. They had a noise in one channel, one track, the bass doing something else here. And then the rest are melody. Here's some phasing here. I'll get into that in a second. Well, first I'll play the whole song. Okay, that's the song, so I'm going to turn off the percussion and uh, bass just so we can hear the melody. So what we're hearing is channel zero, and that's all. It's got some kind of, uh, it's got a little bit slow attacks so that it um, sounds like a, like a wind instrument, like a trumpet or, or a saxophone or something. Now what instrument is that, or what sample type is that? Well, on the right side of the screen it shows, it looks like it's, um, it looks like it's uh, a special waveform, but I think it's a sawtooth wave. So let's check here. Yeah, channel 0 and 1 are sawtooth. Um, I have my program so that when uh, the sample type is changed, uh, it'll show up on the, it'll slide up on the right hand side of the screen. There you go, you can see it now. When the sample type changes, it'll uh, show up in a little box with dots uh, uh, um, showing the waveform that was written into RAM. Okay, so I think it pairs up sam uh, channels 1 and 2 to make a more dynamic sound. Ah, not quite yet. Now it's just doing a chorus. Do you hear that? That phasing is done by pairing two uh, channels with similar or same waveform and having their pitch offset just a tiny amount. Um, one channel by itself, it sounds like beeps and boops. The same one does as well. So the only way to get any kind of real uh, fullness or more richness to the sound is by pairing them up uh, and having the phasing create more a richer tone. Like this. And here it has all three, <laughs> it has three channels now. Doing a, uh, a chord or a chorus kind of effect, or even just phasing between similar pitches. Yeah. Channel 2 here is, is operating as an echo of channel 0.
I'll play that again. So three channel echo. And this is being treated as a uh, a percussive hit. It starts out with a very quick uh, attack fade out, and then it does an arpeggio. So this is being treated like a, uh, uh, I guess, an organ with a very quick decay. arpeggiating the sound. And that's a guitar twang. <laughs> everything but the lead channels. And that's how Hudson Soft built up a lot of their uh, sounds for the PC Engine. Uh, a couple leads that are uh, offset in pitch a little bit to make a phasing effect. Um, they even have a stereo phasing effect sometimes. Uh, and then uh, they use uh, manual, because it is manual, they use manual volume changes to make a different uh, uh, voice envelope for each of the uh, sound instruments. Uh, but it's all done manually, so uh, it's a bit of hard work, uh, but it does make a, lar a huge difference in the quality of the sound that comes out. So that's it for this song. Okay, next is going to be Devil's Crush. Stop that. Okay, uh, Devil's Crush has a very famous uh, compile-like sound to it. Uh, even though it was programmed, or even though it was published by Naxatsoft, compile, uh, very famous shoot 'em up, and pinball uh, game uh, studio uh, programmed it. And uh, compile's music has a very typical sound across a lot of their games: Blazing Lasers, uh, Gunhead, um, Spriggan, uh, Musha, Aleste on the uh, on the Mega Drive and this one. So I'll just play it. So it's got a nice chorus sound on a couple of these channels. Here and here. That's using... Let's look at it. That. That is like a doubled up uh, sine wave, a bit twisted, uh, and they add a pitch bend and vibrato to it. As you can see. And it sounds like a human voice. So by using vibrato, pitch bend, or portamento, it's a pitch bend actually, you get a chorus type effect. That's it. Very nice. And here's the bass. their fast attack harpsichord or string-like sound.
and a single channel for a real nice throaty bass. Uh, Compile, I think, puts vibrato on all of their channels, so they all have a quite distinct sound. Uh, let's look. Oh, look at that. Okay, that is a square wave or a pulse wave with lots of different transitions. So let's look at it here. There. It's a pulse wave, wave with lots of uh, overtones. And if you double that up, you'll get a real rumbling bass sound. This just uses a single one. So, Well, let's go to the main song. It's got samples as well. Well, it's got so much I don't know going on. I don't know where to begin. Uh, first of all, uh, you can see how often it's changing uh, uh, the waveform in uh, channel two or channel yeah channel two the yellow one, yellow one. Uh, I guess it's just to get a different effect, and uh, you can see channel zero and three are paired up, and that creates the lead guitar sound. Yeah, it's just awesome. I'll turn this off though. Uh, I think this channel is the sample, so. Yeah, these are, so this is the direct uh, waveform output on channel 4. You can see over channel 4 has uh, these audio channels shut off and it just write it just writes uh, the byte data directly into the waveform uh, cache, the sample cache. Um, it's not very high uh, bit rate and it doesn't sound that great. It's only five uh, bits. But you could pair up two channels to get uh, eight, nine, or ten bits. There are ways to make it sound much better. This just uses a simple drum hit, so. So here. Interesting. So again, it's got kind of a saxophony sound. I don't know what to call these. These are paired up. And so here's the leads. So as you can see, uh, channel zero is just a straight note. Uh, it's flat. Channel three has vibrato on it. And so channel zero is sawtooth. Channel three has a very uh, 
narrow uh, so, uh, pulse wave, pulse width wave. That's pulse wave. That's saw. And they interact with each other quite well. This is just bass. Again, that's that uh, pretty deep. There's a pretty deep uh, pulse w uh, wave with uh, all the transitions, the crossings there. Nothing too special there, it's the same as before. There's more going on here though. That's the lead. That's the bass. Oh, all that bass is coming from this one channel. That's great. I didn't expect that. Ah, this guy's helping out. And this one too. So the accompaniment is helping out with the bass as well. So this is the voice the chorus. This you can see here is quite uh, sonorant. It's like a sine wave or an organ sound. It's a single waveform of sine wave with a lot of higher frequency overtones. So it's obviously creating some harmonics, very simple harmonics, but harmonics nonetheless. I'll keep the sample channel off just so you can listen. Yeah, so it's fun to pick apart these uh, game soundtracks and figure out how they made these awesome effects. Uh, I'm gushing too much, so I think I'll stop here. Okay, next up I will play Ankoku Densetsu. Do you hear that? It's not the song, it's paused right now. Ankoku Densetsu, uh, or Legendary Axe 2, uh, is pretty damn awesome. Uh, this is basically my favorite soundtrack on the PC Engine, just because uh, it's not bleepy bloopy. It's got layers of bass uh, and scratchy uh, uh, inter not interference, scratchy phasing going on all over the place, uh, and a great melody as well when it has the lead melodies. So. Two channels only.
and again it's that similar uh, pulse width uh, pulse wave with uh, some crossings over so it gives a bunch of overtones and that's what channels 4 and 5 use and uh, this uh, was program or this uh, music was made by uh, Hirotoshi Suzuki I believe uh, who worked for Atlas or who at least made music for Atlas um, a very famous uh, sound out of Atlas's games on the NES and uh, PC Engine also Super Famicom uh, I think the sound drivers were made by uh, Tsukasa uh, Masako uh, otherwise known as Makko uh, he made uh, the music for Dungeon Explorer and uh, uh, Megami Tensei series uh, also uh, Hirotoshi Suzuki and other guys at Atlas made Bonk's Adventure, music for Bonk's Adventure, and so it has a similar sound driver. Uh, this. This phasing. Almost all of these games have it. That's like the hallmark of the Atlas's sound driver. There, it's got some stereo phasing going on. so good I'll, I'll but I'll cut these guys out now what's going on here okay ooh that doesn't sound great it's obviously used for metallic clang that fades out Channels two and three. Yeah, that's a waveform that just crosses over lots of times. I'm sure it's quite a dissonant sound. Channels zero and one have half of a pulse width channel and then half a very small triangle. So it's a mix between a triangle wave and a pulse width wave, or uh, sorry, a, a pulse wave, a square wave. Uh, and that's the sound that it creates. Pretty interesting. And again, you can hear there's lots of phasing between two paired channels. I'll start it up again. That's used as a accompaniment. These are used as more horn type sound. Yeah, and it's it's basically a sine wave with a a little notch right at the top, uh, the front and the back. It gives it a horn sound. It's a very heavy sound. There's a trill. I love that trill. There's a flattened out triangle wave making some sounds too, as a percussion.
These are paired again. And that's a very quick uh, volume burst to make a some kind of a tom sound or a, a drum sound using only a triangle wave. Now this one's quite thick. How do I turn off the sound channels then? Let's see. So, channel 1 and 5 are paired. As a minor accompaniment. So that's a bass with vibrato. And so these are the leads. And here we have percussion, uh, noise going on again. So these four channels, even though they're at different pitches, they definitely uh, phase and play off each other. That phasing, and then that phasing. So basically having pairs of channels, so cutting down your polyphony from six down to three, is a way to get some great sounds. Uh, it's It kind of cuts back what you can play, but I think the layers more than make up for it. And if your instruments if your instruments are percussive enough, then you don't really need too much samples or percussion. You can see the uh all the envelopes on the left side of the screen are very complex. The trills going coming on again. Now I'll stop that for a second. Look at the sample for channel zero. It's a square wave, but its uh, period is doubled up, so it's twice as high in pitch. Um, it's one octave up. Um, on the PC Engine, the uh, I'll stop that there. On the PC Engine, uh, the uh, choice of uh, choice of uh, settings for higher octaves is very limited. So, in other words, there are not many uh, frequency positions at higher octaves. It's a uh, logarithmic scale. So, there's a lot of uh, uh, bit space in the low octaves that's completely wasted, uh, in my opinion. So a lot, what a lot of guys do if they want to get very high uh, definition in the pitch bends and so on in the higher octaves is they use a sample that's twice as uh, high in pitch and then they have a you know twice as much space bit space uh, to get it done. So that's quite clever, and you can hear that here. So, so basically, flutes really benefit if you're just using a square wave, just uh, double the pitch or quadruple the pitch, and they have a lot more space with a lot more uh, wider frequency uh, scope. Although you can't get bass anymore, so if it's for if for flutes, it's all right. So what is this one doing? Again, the rumbling bass in the bottom.
And here we have some tremolo on these channels. And that then the lead comes in. Now what's this made out of? Okay, so channel 0 and 1 are using this waveform shape. Uh, it's pretty complex. Um, it does have overtones and it sounds a little like, like a voice if you uh, pair them and uh, have them put vibrato on, as well as a pretty drastic uh, pitch bend at the start. And this has some good trills, so I'll turn them off. Just a couple channels off. Listen to that. Some very nice trills on that lead. Okay, I'll stop it there. Whoa! Alright, that's what I'll stop this one. Yeah, that was Ankoku Densetsu, or Legendary Axe 2. Highly recommended. Okay, I've gone on for long enough about uh, how the professionals make music. Uh, and then, uh, after this, I'm going to talk about how you can create or carve your own uh, sound sets. Not necessarily how to make music, uh, because there are other tools that do that, and I'm not an expert in them because I'm not a composer. But um, I've shown how uh, the, com the professionals put together different sound channels, pair them up to make phasing and other things. Uh, and, well, I'll show you in another uh, segment how to do it yourself.